Oh my goodness, somebody pinched me. I, I'm so excited to talk to the man in front of me because I had a chance to uh, listen to him and Nikita when he was on Nikita's show. So you got to go back to man up. You know, it's time to man up with Nikita to hear more about Frank Shelton. But how cool is this? You might have heard a story on Nikita's show. So we hope that you go to that podcast or the broadcast from, from when Frank Shelton was on the show with Nikita because, Frank, you travel right all over the place yes I sir so. i do and it's great to be with you and i love cars as well christ cars and candy bars are my friends so we're in good <laughs> good shape <laughs> i like candy bars too so I we're, do. we got a lot in common but anyway frank is an amazing man of god he travels all over the globe but also a prolific is our pro, i'm going to say that he writes a lot of books yes sir i used to be a speechwriter for a member of congress and they said, well, how do you do that? And I said, I close my eyes, say a prayer, and uh, pretend like one day I'd have to give the speech. And I started writing his speeches. And one time he threw the speech at me. It hit me in the chest. I said, well, I guess you don't like that. He goes, no, it's great, but I got floor votes on the floor of Congress. I said, well, who's going to give it, the chief of staff? He said, no, you wrote it. Go give it. And next thing I know, that started opening up doors for me to speak at ribbon cuttings, hospital groundbreakings, um, graduations for public schools and even started wrote a speech for a Nobel Peace Prize recipient so you just never know really yeah it's been wild yeah but I'm really excited to be with you today in Nashville you have this like a more than amazing story more than amazing story you got to listen to Nikita's podcast to hear oh, it all, well, but thank you well, we got to talk about your new book yes sir it is urgency like wow and it is urgent heaven or hell yes sir and there's nothing more urgent than that, is it? No. You know, I really believe, um, Robbie, that we've been so busy playing checkers, the real battle's at the chess table. Checkers is temporal. Chess is eternal. Chess, kind of talking about, you know, is it War Eagle or Roll Tide? You know, is it Ford versus Chevy? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but the eternal is the Lord versus Satan. You're going to heaven or hell. And, you know, a lot of people make a vacation once a summer if you're blessed to go to the lake or go to the ocean or go to the mountains. But a lot of people haven't thought about their eternal vacation. You know, there's people who die and never left a will. Well, they put it on the back burner. And I'm just sharing this in love. The subtitle, as you mentioned, is called Heaven or Hell. And there was a publicist I was viewing ironically, and they were like, wow, well, that's a little bold. Can we take that out? I said, no, that's what it's all about. And the cover has an hourglass, and the sand of time has about slipped yeah, through. Yeah, it does. It looks like Dorothy's fixed to meet the Wicked Witch here. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I tell people, Robbie, if we're not in the bottom of the ninth, I think we realize we're probably in the top of the ninth. But there's no extra innings. And I like what one preacher said, hell was too long to be wrong. So I think the pandemic was a space of grace to get our house in order. And uh, when it came out, it was the number one new release on all of Amazon for Christianity and evangelism. And, and it had some wild stories. I, I, I was the one that had the honor to connect Roger Stone with Franklin Graham the night he made a public commitment to Christ. One time I'm at an airport and I see an African-American come to me. God said, give her your seat. Didn't know who she was. Found out it was Alice Marie Johnson. Kim Kardashian went to the Oval Office. Donald Trump got out of prison. So I've met two people who've now gotten two pardons. So I got one from the Lord in 1979. So if you need a pardon, I'm three for three. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. You know, one of my most popular posts I ever made on my website, The Christian Car Guy Show, is vacation ready five must-haves. I need to rethink that. <laughs> wow. Well, maybe the sixth one's free. <laughs> you know what I mean is... I love what you said. Like we think all about our vacation that we're going to go on, but man, we got a we got an all oh, man awesome vacation. Yeah, all I expenses mean, paid. More than that. Yeah, streets of gold, gates of pearl. And here's something to think about: if God made all this in six days and took a break, if Jesus has been gone for two thousand years and he was a carpenter, one, there's no crooked walls in heaven. No. And two, if you think the Biltmore House in Asheville's big. Wait till you see, you know, your house in glory. And, uh, you know, he said, I go to prepare a place for you in my father's house for many mansions. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't have told you so. There where I may be, you may be also. And 
you know, so again, I just think, you know, God died for us. We should live for him. And, you know, this whole thing, I know that's a controversial subject on the vaccine. We won't go deep in that. But this whole narrative of trust the science, I felt like the Lord was waving his hands. Maybe you should trust the Savior. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so, in a, yeah, so it, God's good. Um, but I went through hell writing the book. Um, I wrote 235 pages in five weeks. We were getting ready to go to editing. And um, all hell came against me in three weeks. My car died on top of a 200-foot bridge separating two states. I tied up the Saturday before 4th of July traffic. They weren't pleased. The next Saturday, I preached for the first pastor in America who was arrested for having church in the pandemic. He was arrested. I'm preaching in his pulpit July 4th. And um, I come home. And Microsoft Edge deleted the 235-page book. The only file to be deleted out of my computer was the book. It was gone a week before getting ready to go to editing to print. I had to rewrite it all over again with no notes. I had to start from scratch. So one Saturday, my car died. The next Saturday, the book is dead or stolen. And the third Saturday, coming out of my house, I felt like my best friend died. I'm barefoot. God said, walk off some steam. You're going to have to redo it. And uh, I got bit by a four-foot snake coming out of my house. And three Saturdays, a dead car, a dead book. And now I'm looking, is it a dead snake or a dead author? Is it poisonous or not? I was afraid to come out of my house for two weeks. What kind of snake was it? Now you got it, us all wondering. It was a Maryland racer snake. But at 7 a.m. with sleep in your eyes, everything looks venomous. <laughs> but I didn't get him. But the funny thing is, fast forward. Seven months later, when we, when we finally went to print, the day going to print, I see the snake again out by my house. And it was pregnant with lunch. And someone <laughs> said, I'll just leave it. And I said, no, I'm taking this guy out. And I killed him. So I got bit the week after my book was stolen. But I took out the snake when we went to print. <laughs> and then it was the number one new release on Amazon. So all glory to God. But I went through a little hell. To give the reader a little bit of heaven. So, uh, the the question I always love to ask authors is, there's there's two different things I love to ask. One is, you know, God asks you to write a book. Mm -hmm. You feel that calling. Is he's, he's going to help you write this speech, however that works. Yes, sir. And then all of a sudden, he just shocks you with something you did not see coming out of left field at all. Like what? Right. And and like, man, you want me to? Okay. And what was that in this book? Well, great. So first of all, I can totally see God saying it for multiple ways, but I'll give you two quick ones. Number one, um, when the bottom fell out, ego means edging God out. And I'm on a missions trip, yes, but an ego trip, no. And if it was pride or the flesh or ego, no one would have went what I went through for round two. So it was truly God to keep pressing on. And two... A disappointment was a divine appointment, and I did more research, and when you talk about Dr. Fauci and the vaccine, and all that wouldn't have been in the first edition. So whatever the devil meant for evil, I God meant for good. I don't know if you've heard there's a silver alert out for Dr. Fauci, you know, since the invasion there in Russia. No, nobody's seen him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, <laughs> it, 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 it's definitely true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have this presence over top of me. <laughs> yeah, Nikita Kolos just stole his wallet. I saw the whole thing. Yeah, right my, Sarah's, my security detail is here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but no, God God was in it. And by the way, I, I love Nikita, and I'm so thankful for the connection. And I want to encourage everyone to listen to the oh, yeah. podcast. But no, we, but God's hand was in it, and what was 235 pages were stolen. It was supposed to be about 260 pages. I don't like to read, but, you know, I enjoy writing, but it, it's 500 pages, but it is wild. I have a candidate for governor in the Northwest tells me she's been quoting my book in her speeches. I, I just had a two hour private lunch with a secret service agent. And I'm expecting some pushback. He said, Frank, he said, other than the Bible, this is the most amazing thing I've read. And I'm on the presidential detail. You know what I mean? And he, and he said, I agree with what you wrote. So there's that we have special have a connection with that. Yeah, Washington's my backyard. I, my family are five-generation Washingtonians. 
And um, we're five generation DC police. My ancestor hand carried Abraham Lincoln across the street the night he died. My dad was the assistant chief of the entire U.S. Capitol Police. So out of 3,000, my dad was the number two top cop. He protected eight presidents. My ancestor on my mom's side hand planted the world famous cherry blossoms in 1912 that a million people come every April to see what he created. It was a gift from Okinawa. Um, so we're not out to hurt anyone. I personally worked in four White Houses, two different parties. I wanted more than one party at my funeral. But having said that, um, you know, it wasn't just God that told me to write the book. All my friends said, Frank, wow, well, you did 20 years on the Hill. You got an award of the United Nations. You worked in a couple White House. You're friends with Hollywood. I think you can help us piece the puzzle together where we're at with End Time Prophecy. Plus, you're an evangelist. You're on staff with Billy Graham. Write a book. So I felt not only called of God, but I had friends that said, please. And towards the end of the book, I said two things. Um, at one time, I wanted to take a bullet for the president. It's been in the family. Billy Graham said, you're not ready to live until you're ready to die. But I wrote at one time, I thought I would take a bullet for the president. But by writing this book, I felt like God said maybe I was to protect society as a whole, to read what's going on. There's a 2030 plan implemented by the UN. It's a fact Bill Gates owns more farmland than anybody in America today. Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting time that we live in. And I just believe in an eagle, now's the time to soar, not be sour. And we can't be a peacock and strut arrogantly, but we can't be an ostrich and stick our head in the sand. But his eye's still on the sparrow. So wherever you're at in the leadership spectrum among birds, I just believe if God be for you, who can be against you? So, and, and I'll just share this. I, I, I've been in a room with Trump. I've been in a room with Biden. But a lot of people are looking for the return of Trump. We better listen to the sound of the trumpet because we're that close. <laughs> Again, Checkers is politics. Chess is the Bible. And I'm going to stick with the Bible. So for those people who really just have questions. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know about this God. I don't, you know. Yeah. And they pick up your book. What in that book are you just, man, I can hardly wait till they get to this. Well, I preach it. Well, so I was booked in 10 countries in 12 months in 2020. I was getting ready to fly to Pakistan to preach to 100,000 Muslims. And you say, why in the world would you go? Because I knew time was running out. And two, regardless of the fake news, God loves Muslims. But it was my job to tell them God loves Muslims and they need God. And that's not Allah or Confucius or Muhammad or Buddha. It's Christ, and, and hell's too long to be wrong. So I was booked in 10 countries, 12 months, but when the pandemic hit, the bottom fell out. And that's when the Lord told me, you're in my army, but I need you in the Air Force. And you'll <laughs> love this, True Talk Radio. He said, take the airwaves back. So do as many radio shows, television shows, podcasts, and let my people know. So while we were on house arrest, I was speaking out. And um, so one chapter is called Pandemic or Plandemic. Towards the end, one chapter is called Stand. Jesus said, having done all, stand. The last chapter, he said, occupy till I come. But what I really want them to realize at the end is God loves you. He has a plan for you. And he's not a good way to heaven. He's the only way to heaven. And at the end, I tell them how God changed my life. And, uh, and for a guy that worked in four White Houses, it's one thing to be at the White House. you got to make sure your reservation's in his house. And... Uh, you know, God loves you, and it tells you how you can know Christ as your Savior. And going to the beach is one thing, but missing heaven is everything. So I want you to find heaven before it's too late. Wow. But wow. I love you. And man, I'm honored to be with you. Love to your listeners. Then go to frankshelton.com, S-H-E-L-T-O-N.com. Go to Amazon, type in Urgency Frank Shelton. And I would encourage you to buy two books. And for those of you who spell like me. Yeah. Urgency is not spelled with an E. It's spelled with a U. <laughs> and so I, I'm like, what is that word? Oh, it's urgency. Yeah. You are. <laughs> U-R-G-E-N-C-Y. Urgency. Because I really believe ministry minus urgency equals catastrophe. Oh, wow. We're late in the game. Uh, but I've read the end of the book. And Jesus wins. There you go. Frank Shelton. Well, absolutely amazing. God bless you. Well, God. Robbie, I love you. And, and I love blessings you. to you and your listeners. Same here. Have fun.